Hello, everybody. This is Kamal. I welcome you all to this talk. As part of this, I'm going to talk to you about worldwide AI forecast and some of the relevancy of different machine learning techniques that are used in use cases across industry. It's very important for us to understand what is used in business, what are more potential, and how do we go ahead learning some of these techniques as a data science practitioner so that you can better match to what is the need of the hour in the industry side. If you look at the worldwide AI forecast by IDC recently, uh, they have looked into the analysis of the worldwide revenues across software, hardware, services, uh, and, and mentioned that they are seeing a growth of almost 16 to 17% year on year in 2021. And then that's going to hit close to 500 plus billion dollars by 2024. So advancements in machine learning, conversational AI, computer vision AI are at the forefront of AI inventions or software inventions that we are seeing as part of this analysis and research. Architecting conversed business and IT processes, how can you change and optimize IT processes, predictions, recommendations, better refinements and optimizations, and enabling transformative power of the customer and building a healthy and improved employee and customer experiences. That's what everybody is looking for. So obviously, if we look at it, there's a tremendous uh, you know, options about focusing on these aspects as, as we look in the next few years down the line. Another key aspect on this, when you look at techniques relevance heat map by industry, this is uh, analysis from McKinsey. If we uh, research and focus on, they have analyzed somewhere around 400 use cases across 19 industries. And some of the key takeaways that we see here is the usage relevance based on two different parts of it. As you would see, one is on the traditional analytics techniques, more about the core machine learning methods, and also the improved or advanced machine learning or deep learning and reinforcement learning areas. As we could see here, obviously, the deep learning and reinforcement learning areas are getting up past. At the same time, traditional analytics techniques and machine learning methods continue to be used more across industry segments, as you could see. For example, insurance, retail, CPG, and then some of other banking, financial services, and some of other cases, we could see there's a significant amount of usage of tree-based ensemble learning methods, classifiers, clustering, regression analysis, and of course, statistical inferences, right? At the same point of time, when we look at on the deep learning and reinforcement learning side of it, uh, feed forward networks, which is the you know, basic of uh, the neural networks, along with RNN, uh, are, are picking up. There are other areas in the convolutional neural networks, GANs, generative adversarial networks, and also there is a new usage that's picking up in reinforcement learning. So net net, you know, your traditional analytics techniques are to be used a lot, and then we have seen that in the past have been used in majority of the use cases. When we look at mapping of these techniques and likelihood of usage in future, there are a potential way to look at what are the uh, you know, simpler or traditional approaches, how do we look at it advanced or complex techniques, and then of course the likelihood of usage in future potentially relatively when we say this. At the same point in time in the previous uh, slide, if you have lo looked at, we have, we have a uh, analysis by industry, but we would also like to see what is the potential likelihood of usage, you know, how they are improving. Obviously, if we look at the transfer learning, reinforcement learning, and the deep learning uh, advanced techniques will be used a lot in, in some of these cases that we are noticing in future. And at the same point of time, there's a lot of focus continue to exist in the um, high uses sector and the core machine learning methods be that the simple classifiers, um, clustering, regression, and ensemble-based learning approaches. Also, if you look at potential value of AI by industry, um, we, we all know that you know, retail, banking, and financial services instance, they, they have adopted AI 
over the past few years uh, a lot. At the same point of time, when we see what is the, the potential value, these are not forecasts, but, but indicative potential as per the research and may change, of course. But this is the research from uh, McKinsey and their analysis. And the, some of these, as we could see, of course, you know, retail um, and, and some of the others are looking way ahead compared to others in terms of the, the share of uh, yeah, impact. Um, the value depends on various factors across all of these industries, if we look at. One, the applicability of the use cases, how applicable it is, in, and, and how AI and ML is playing a role, be it from an automation perspective, semi-automation perspective, refinement or optimization perspective, or lowering the maintenance cost, whatever it is, the applicability of use cases is very, very important. Second key factor is the availability of the relevant data. So even if you have... Uh, the use case identified, if there is no relevant data or business specific data, then it's very difficult to uh, see value on top of it on the analytics that we perform, right? And then third, of course, there are regulatory and other constraints uh, that, that also have to be taken into factor. And uh, in addition to that, another key point is if we look at the top functions within some of these industries, um, th there is uh, the research also says that you know the focus is on sales and marketing, supply chain management, manufacturing, you know these kind of areas. That's all about it. Please um, uh, give your feedback um, on on the comments below. If there is any any queries or feedback, please feel free to write. Thank you so much.